Welcome to iLecture Online. In this example, we seem to have a bit of a problem. Notice that they're both in a different format, and notice that the bottom equation has two terms both containing a y. So it's better to have it kind of in a standard form, y equals a function of x, or at least having both of the variables on one side and the constant on the other side, and in this case, we don't have that. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite both equations, simplify them. Here we're going to move the 2i to the left side. There we want to get rid of the fraction first because fractions are hard to deal with. So what we're going to do is, in this case, we're going to multiply the top equation by 5. We're going to multiply both sides by 5. And here we're going to move the 2i to the other side. So the two equations then become 5 times y would be, oh, and I don't want to use an x here because that gets confusing, so I'll just put a little dot there. So 5 times y is 5y minus x divided by 5 times 5, you just get an x, equals minus 4 times 5 is minus 20. So that's our new top equation. The bottom equation, we're going to move the 2y to the left side, so we get 3y minus 2y um, plus x, Oh, not plus x because there's an equal sign there. So equal sign plus x minus 8. Notice here I'm going to move the negative x to the right side. So I have the x on the right side for both equations. On the left side, we're going to combine these two. So we get 5y equals x minus 20. And here we end up with 3y minus 2y, which is y equals x minus 8. So now at least... I have them both kind of in a similar format. Now I'm ready to try to pick a good method to solve that. And notice, I end up with a x over here and an x over there. They already have the same numerical coefficient. All I have to do is make one of them negative, and I can add the two equations. So let me try that. Then I eliminate x. I'm going to use the method of elimination by multiplying this equation by a negative 1. So the top equation becomes 5y equals x minus 20. And the bottom equation becomes minus y equals minus x plus 8. I simply changed all the signs. Now when I add the two together, notice I get 5y minus y, which is 4y, equals x minus x, that gives me 0, and minus 20 plus 8 gives me minus 12. And if I come over here to finish the job, I can say I get 4y is equal to, I can drop the 0, I get minus 12, and that should be, yeah, 4y, so divide both sides by 4, and I get y is equal to negative 3. So there you go. First, I manipulated two equations to make them into the same format. Then I realized the elimination method seemed the practical method because I had the same numerical coefficient here. And it is y equals negative 3. Of course, we're not done yet because now we need to find x. And how do we find x? Well, we need to um, pick one of our equations to plug y equals negative 3 into. And perhaps I can use this equation right here because that's a simple form of an equation. So let's try that. So here we go. That happens to be the bottom equation rewritten. So we end up with y is equal to x minus 8. And then I can plug that into my variable y. So minus 3 is equal to x minus 8. Move the 8 to, this, to the other side. Minus 3 plus 8 equals x. Or 5 equals x. Or x equals 5. And there's my second value. So here are the two numbers. x equals 5. y equals negative 3. That's where we have a common solution. That's where the two equations cross. That's the point of intersection when x equals 5 and y equals negative 3. Now, how do we know we did it correctly? Let's do a check. Of course, I used the bottom equation to come up with a solution for x and y. So now we'll plug those both into the top equation. So I'm going to write the equation y minus x over 5 equals negative 4 question mark when I plug in x equals 5 and y equals negative 3. So negative 3 minus x is a positive 5, 5 over 5 equals negative 4, question mark. So we have negative 3 minus 1 equals negative 4, or negative 4 equals negative 4. That is correct, so therefore I know that those two numbers must be correct, and that is how it's done. I wonder when you do that step where you just have a big bracket and a 5, should you make this on both sides? Too? 
Yeah, I guess it's a method that we do to make it easy. But at this level, so what you're saying is, I should take the equation y minus x over 5 equals negative 4, and then then go like this and multiply this times 5 and multiply this times 5. So then you end up with 5y minus x equals minus 20. And so you can see that you're doing the same thing but to both sides of the equation. Yes, that's... Same thing with the next one that you did. And the same one with the other one, yeah. Maybe I should use that practice. That's a lazy, you just be lazy. It's the lazy man's way of doing things, yeah, yes. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, I will employ the other method next time.